But the sentencing for R&B artist R. Kelly is taking place today, and our very own Sierra Gillespie was at the Brooklyn courthouse to be our eyes and ears. Remember, Kelly was charged with sex trafficking and racketeering in his federal trial last year, although he did not take the stand in his own defense. He pleaded not guilty to all of the charges against him. We have Sierra here with us now while the court takes their lunch break to bring us the latest. Thank you so much for joining us, Sierra. Sierra, please give us an update on what's going on. Yeah, Michelle, thank you so much for having me. The biggest thing we've heard so far today are the eight victim impact statements that were very incredibly emotional. Multiple women and even the father of one of the survivors came forward and spoke in front of R. Kelly detailing years of abuse, a lot of crying, a lot of people struggling to get through, but all in the end saying today is a day for justice, that R. Kelly needs to receive the maximum sentence. Now, in the courtroom today, it is nearly filled. There are dozens of reporters, spectators, multiple courtrooms, and overflow courtrooms are filled today. But when Judge Donnelly announced that all of R. Kelly's charges could equate a lifetime sentence, there was an audible gasp in the courtroom. So R. Kelly today, later after this lunch break, could be handed down a life sentence. Sierra, tell us a little bit more about the victim impact statements. Yeah, Michelle, these were really emotional for a lot of the women to get through and even for a spectator to listen on. They detailed what they called modern day slavery. They said that they were enticed by R. Kelly, who promised them fame. A lot of them were hoping to become celebrities themselves who were aspiring singers, young underage girls, many of which in the Miami area who Kelly reached out to. And at first they thought, OK, this is a mentorship program. I'm going to learn something. And instead, it's what they called modern day slavery. A lot of them said they had been diagnosed with depression, trauma, PTSD. And a lot of them said that Kelly does not show any sign of remorse. This is something that multiple of the victims or survivors, I should say, touched on. They said they believe that Kelly has a God complex, that he used this to groom young women, girls, boys for his own sexual gratification, and many of them said he shows no empathy even today. They pointed to him, even one of the survivors said, hey, you know what, I can see Kelly over at that table and he's talking to his attorneys. I'm going to wait. I don't want to interrupt his conversation. So many of them felt that they were still being disrespected by R. Kelly even today at his federal sentencing. Sarah, now I know one of the victim's father spoke out. What did he have to say? So this was kind of interesting. One of the victims who came forward, Faith, she initially said, I'm not going to speak at all. But after she heard some of the really strong emotional statements from some of the other survivors, she came forward and spoke. So her father, Charles, spoke after that. And he said, you know what? I'm not here to criticize R. Kelly. What I want him to know is I'm speaking to him father to father. I know that he has children. I know that he has a daughter. What I want is for him to think about how it would feel if someone did this to his daughter. A lot of people, including this father who gave this victim impact statement, kept pointing to faith and saying, I really hope you can find faith, that you can find the Lord and find a way in your heart to forgive yourself. But specifically, this father circled in on the fact that he believes he can be forgiven by a higher power. But in order to do that, R. Kelly needs to confess and admit what he did was wrong. What do you expect R. Kelly to say, or, or do you expect him to speak at all? So as you mentioned earlier, Kelly did not speak. He chose not to testify in the trial, but we could still hear from him today. I was keeping a close ear on everything they said earlier this morning ahead of the lunch break, and they did not make any mention of whether after this Kelly may speak and address the court. However, it is something that we could see. Now, if you're listening to what the survivors have to say, then Kelly doesn't believe that he did anything wrong. But if he is to address the court, he likely would ask for a reduced sentence. His um, attorneys actually had filed as recently as last night for an acquittal or for a complete retrial, which the judge denied. So I assume if Kelly is to speak, he's going to ask for a lesser sentence. What I also find interesting is uh, we heard from you before you said that the courtroom gasped. 
when they said he could receive a lifetime sentence. Is a lifetime sentence something that they expected? I think when you add up all of the convictions that Kelly has, it kind of makes sense for a lifetime charge. Ahead of any of these victim impact statements we heard this morning, there was nearly an hour of Judge Donnelly going through all of Ellie's convictions, what that means, what sentencing guidelines lay out for that. And she was saying, you know, 32 years here, 12 years here. And when you add that up, R. Kelly is 55 years old. You add all these years together, it would be a lifetime sentence for him. So even though there was a gap in the courtroom, this is something that we should have been expecting. What was the atmosphere like around the courtroom where you were at? I know you were not inside the courtroom, but were you able to see some of the, the victims come out or, or the victim's father? Or, or what was their demeanor like? So one of the victims said that she wished to speak alongside her attorney, Gloria Allred. Now, early this morning, I arrived pretty early and actually spoke with Allred herself, who said, this doesn't end today, but today will bring some little bit of justice to a predator. This is a word I've heard many, many times throughout the day, either these victim impact statements or attorneys. People are saying this is a day of justice. Now, as I said, I'm outside the courtroom right now. There are dozens of cameras, so much media here and so much attention to this case. And I think for a lot of people, what this means is justice. A lot of the victims who spoke today, who now consider themselves survivors, say, I want this to prove to other people who have similar experiences or maybe victimized themselves, you are not alone. You do not have to be silent. So all in all, it seems like a very strong day in terms of the Me Too movement. All right, finally, before we let you go, Sierra, what do you expect now to happen the rest of the afternoon? I am hoping after this, being cautiously optimistic that we hear from Kelly himself, that would be a great thing just to see what he's feeling in this day. As I said, I can't really see what he looks like, but I haven't heard anything from him. So it would be great to hear that. In terms of sentencing, it's up to the judge, but I would not be surprised if a lengthy sentence is handed down. The prosecution is asking for excess of 25 years, and we can't forget that Kelly faces additional federal charges out of Illinois. So even if he does not receive a life sentence today, he could receive an additional sentence in those coming charges that he faces.